I'm Becky Carroll and I'm the Associate Extension Specialist for Fruits and Pecans. And today we're out in the, the backyard fruit uh, tree demonstration area at the Cimarron Valley Research Station. And we started planting a few apple trees and peach trees um, a, a couple of years ago out here on the research station just to have an area to show uh, students and master gardeners and other visitors some of the things that we might could grow in this part of Oklahoma and then also some of the things that might not be suited for our part of the state and so We've got several apples in here. Uh, I wanted to just mention uh, if you have a, a Honeycrisp apple in your, in your yard and you start to see some uh, strange looking coloring on the leaves, um, this is actually, it's called Honeycrisp uh, Leaf Modeling Disorder. And it is, it is um, it's actually a buildup of extra starches in the leaves and it's found on young Honeycrisp trees or, or Honeycrisp apple that don't have a lot of fruit. And so once these trees start fruiting, those starches will be redistributed and, and the fruit will, will use some of that. But right now, since these are just planted this past year, um, it's showing up on some of these, these leaves as this mottled area. When I first saw it, uh, I was afraid that we had some type of herbicide injury, but it's actually just a disorder that's found on Honeycrisp apples. So we've got several different types of apples. The first few are Honeycrisp, and then we have some, um, we have Fuji, and we have Arkansas Black, we have Gala, Red Delicious, and they're doing pretty well. The only ones that we had trouble with that we planted this year were our Granny Smith, and for some reason, they shocked down and have died uh, the last uh, few months. So we'll, we'll look into that and see what we can find and why we may have some problems with that. So other than apples in our fruit tree planting, we have some almonds, some Russian pomegranates, We've also got some Asian persimmons. We have both Fuyu and Eureka. And the Eureka did not survive after planting, but the Fuyu seemed to be doing well. We have a couple of different types of apricots. We have Park and Chinese Mormon. We have several different types of figs, uh, Celeste, LSU Purple, Brown Turkey, and Violet de Bordeaux. We also have uh, Methley and Bruce plums, we have several different types of pears. We have Maxine and Moonglow, which are the oriental type of pears. And then we have 20th Century and Hoshui that are Asian pears. We have uh, several cherries, Black Tartarian, Compact Stella, uh, Regular Stella, North Star, Montmorency. And then on our peaches, we have Bowden, Red Haven, Effie, Loring, August Rose, Souvenirs, A More Sweet, and July Rose. A few of those are nectarines. The Bowden, Effie, and A More Sweet are some of our newer nectarine uh, varieties that we're testing. So one thing that is very important with growing fruit trees is to have good weed control. And so in some areas, um, fruit trees, they just don't compete well with other grasses and weeds. So we want to have a weed-free area around our, our fruit plantings. And so in this situation, we've got some bark mulch, and it works in, in controlling the weeds, but also it also uh, holds some moisture in the soil, so it's an added benefit. Uh, you can see we've got some Bermuda grass that's growing up around the middle of that tree, and we really don't want our our mulch to come right up to the tree trunk, but have a little space around the trunk that is uh, free from that mulched area. Um, you can see we've got a little bit escaped coming out the top, but we can, this is a lot easier to treat and weed than just a grassy area. We also have areas where we, um, we're trying to use herbicides, and so we've got a clean strip right here where we've, we've got the weeds uh, kept down with different types of pre-emergence and post-emergence herbicides. The anthill is also helping a little bit to, to control the weeds, but, um, but this is, is beneficial as well, using the herbicides to keep the weeds back. 
We also are trying these little rubber, uh, I think it's probably made out of recycled tires or something, uh, but it's a little bit smaller. I would rather have an area that's about four to six foot that is keeping those weeds back, but this is better than nothing. So any type of weed control is, is really gonna benefit your the tree's growth and, and uh, production. They'll start producing sooner and the tree's gonna grow much better with less weed competition. One fruit that I'm kind of partial to, it's kind of been my, um, my pet project the last couple of years, has been figs. And in central part of, in the northern part of the state, our figs usually die back to the ground and they have a growth habit more of a bush than a tree. In the southern parts of the state and in the southern states, they grow into small trees. But um, in Oklahoma, more than likely they're going to die back to the ground and then new shoots are going to emerge uh, when it gets warmer in the spring and each year they're going to get a little bit uh, bigger, more shoots are going to come out. But uh, this, is, this is a pretty common height for, uh, for a central part of the state. And this one is a brown turkey, but we also have Celeste and Violette de Bordeaux. You can see that leaf structure is a little bit different. The one thing about figs is they don't have a lot of pest. They have um, a really strong aroma to the leaves, and I think that may help with keeping the pest population away from, from the, the plants themselves because they, ha they smell quite strong. Um, the, the fig itself, if, if they don't die back to the ground, they'll, they will fruit a breba crop in the springtime. And you can see they'll set a fruit at each one of these leaf nodes. And so they'll be up and down the entire shoot with, with new little figs. Now these figs um, are not going to be ripe until maybe a few more weeks, but when they you can kind of see how they're attached to the tree at an upright angle. And whenever they, they are ready to be harvested, they'll start to droop. And so they'll be hanging down and it'll be easy to tell when they're ready to harvest. There are some figs that are green, so you can't just go by the coloring. You have to look at the position, how they're attached to the plant. I have, um, I, I, picked a Celeste fig from my plant at home this morning and it's it's a little bit soft. I probably would have left it maybe a day or two longer on the plant but um, if you haven't tried a fig they're pretty tasty. They kind of taste like a floral peach and um, but the thing about figs is they don't last very long. They're very soft and once they're picked they'll start to deteriorate very rapidly. Um, figs they do best in very warm conditions. They like full sunlight, and you can almost watch them grow when it gets really hot. Um, if you want to keep your figs a little bit smaller, you might try pinching out the tops of some of these, um, these plants, and that way they're not growing new leaves, but they're putting their, their energy into uh, producing these fruits below. Now when I pick this, you might notice it's dripping a white um, substance. That's, that's called a, a latex. Some people can be quite allergic to that. So you need to be careful. And if you know that you're allergic to it, you need to wear gloves when you're working around the fig plants. When you harvest the figs, they may have a little bit of that latex on the tip as well. But um, not everyone's allergic. I, I'm not, but uh, some people may have a reaction to that as well. Figs are, are kind of um, not, not adapted quite as well as some of our other fruit trees, but they make a very interesting landscape plant and um, they have some really tasty fruit. So I really enjoy growing them. And I'm trying several different new varieties, trying to find one that's a little bit more cold hardy that might work be better in our conditions. Normally, if we get below 17 degrees, we're going to have that top portion of the plant die back to the ground. One thing about figs is they can be grown in containers pretty easily. And so you can grow them outside, store them in an area that's not gonna to get too cold, and you don't wanna keep it heated, but maybe in a garage or an outbuilding that doesn't get uh, below that 
critical 17 degrees temperature and then you can bring it back out when it starts to warm up in the spring and that way your plant's not going to die back to the ground. You can keep it in a container and um, it needs to be a pretty good size container but it's one thing one way you might can grow figs uh, and keep them alive all year. So if you're interested in learning more about backyard fruit trees, you can uh, follow my Facebook page. It's at Oklahoma Fruit. And I try to post things that I'm seeing out here in the demonstration plot and in my backyard as well. Um, love to hear what you're doing in your situations. So if you have comments you'd like to add to the Facebook page, I'd be happy to post those as well. Um, we also have several different fact sheets on growing peaches and apples. You can find them on, you can find an apple and peach variety uh, sheet. There's one uh, that is for home uh, fruit planting guide and one on pest management as well. So be sure and check those out online if you're interested. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Mm -hmm.